Greetings, Crusaders! My name is DragonFury999, and I welcome you all back to another glorious Crusader reading day. So today we have three more stories created by Claire that we're going to be reading out today. I'm still waiting on a few other stories for other people, but those are going to be coming later on, and we have one story set that is going to be read all at once, eventually, when uh, somebody that I know is going to be getting them done. But if you have any of your own suggestions that you would like me to read out, of course, I would love to see them. I would love to read it out. I'd love to see these stories. I actually like reading these. I like seeing artwork. I love listening to songs. I love reading stories. It's a good time. So, of course, without further ado, Shall we get right into this one, will we? So our first story of the day is called The Warden. Click, click, click. The sound of the guard's claws on stone was that sounded near Wisp's cell. He had counted each guard and how many times they had individually patrolled this route. There was five guards in total. All had done this route. 1,750 each. Wisp had been here for 700 of those patrols. His former cell on the floor below counting may be a bit tedious, but it kept him sane. He had heard about 30 patrols ago a new warden was in charge of his prison. He half wondered what happened to the previous one. Not that he cared. They had been exceedingly cruel. Not that he was very hopeful that the Wardens would be any better. These Carnagekers were horrible. He had come looking for his sister and found these... things. One even daring to wear her face. Oh, Willow, I'm sorry I couldn't protect you from this. Some older sibling I am. He thought bitterly, not daring to make a peep, lest the guards use the excuse to punish him before he could sink further into his thoughts. The steady clicking of claws that had become a constant background fixture had to change to mad scramble. He watched curiously as the guards all rushed out the room, leaving one individual. And those glowing red eyes were all Wisp needed to see to know that was the new warden. And his clearing of the room did not bode well. It seems he wanted private time with the prisoners. And as he walked, Wisp observed the new warden. He was larger than the last, so much larger, with an even more aggressive set of horns. But the way he moved was odd, like he was merely observing rather than stalking like the guards and his predecessor did. Eventually he paused in front of Wisp's cell. He seemed to consider the prisoner. Wisp was watching him right back, wary of what was to come. He wasn't expecting what happened next. The new warden opened the door and stepped in, and instead of harming Wisp like expected, he released Wisp's chains. There's a clan a day run west of there. Flee there and the matron will welcome you, but hurry, I can buy you a three hour head start at most. The warden hissed at Wisp quietly and pushed him out of his cell into a hidden path. Wisp paused the entrance to it and looked to the warden. Thank you for this. I'd ask why, but I get the notion you won't tell me, so I can at least know your name. The warden considered for a moment before nodding. I am Okolis. If the guards of the clan ask, I say I sent you. Now go. Wisp was harshly shoved into the tunnel and sealed behind him. Not looking the gift horse in the mouth, he looked off down the tunnel. He may not know why Okolis had helped him, but he was eternally grateful. Ooh, I like this one. A bit of a prison break, I see. Or more of a... Well, not really a self-serving. What's the word I'm looking for? Forgiving? Empathetic. A very empathetic character for said prisoner. Poor guy. Well, at least he got out. Hopefully that's not the end of that story for that character. Hopefully they continue their adventures and make it to where they're heading. Our next story is called Spider on the Ceiling. The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Anasi hummed from his spot in the rafters, eyeing the king and his bodyguard. His prey he was going to throw the kingdom into chaos with his next few actions. He just had to bide his time, wait for an opening, and he would have his prey. 
Down came the rain and washed the spider out. His opening came. Anasi dropped silently to the floor, taking on the bodyguard's appearance while he was in a different room. Approaching the king, he easily had the advantage. When he removed the royal's jugular, he planted all evidence needed and left bloody footprints all the way to where the bodyguard was. And vanished to the rafters once more. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. The kingdom was in chaos. As Anasi had planned, half of the people believed the bodyguard did it. Conflict erupted, and the ones in charge did nothing. Too busy squabbling over who was now in charge. It was beautiful, watching the fires rage over towns, lighting them up bright enough to make those of the light weaver's domains jealous. The Malasikur couldn't help but smile widely. He loved this. The misery in the air was palpable. The discord festering, and no one knew who had caused it all. This may not destroy the kingdom, no, but it would ruin it, leaving it infested with poverty and crime. And the itsy bitsy spider climbed up the spout again. Soon the kingdom was in ruins, and Nasi found himself in a different royal's rafters, smirking as he prepared for an encore of the previous time. Oh, how he loved what he did. He wasn't called the spider in the dark for nothing, and sitting here, high in his hiding spot, he truly fell in his element. Now let's see what this web would catch him. Maybe becoming crowned, who knows. Either way, Anasi figured this would be fun, and then he dropped the new victim, not even getting a chance to scream. Hmm... <laughs> A bit of deception, a bit of cunning, a truly brutal assassin in the dark. Well played, well played. I like this one. Make a crusader either very proud or kind of terrified. Means you have to watch your back everywhere you go. Good story though. That was a very good one, I liked it. Also, I like the uh, the add-on of the Itsy Bitsy Spider. I don't know why, but it kind of reminds me of... Uh, What's her name from Overwatch? Oh my god. Widowmaker. Kind of reminds me of Widowmaker. If, if that makes sense. Just because of her style. She would probably... I bet she would probably do the same thing. But it was good. Alright, on to our next and last story of the week, shall we? And at last, our last story of the week is called... A Brawl. The sharp sound of scales and flesh tearing under claw was smothered by the roar of the crowd around the pit. But... Fjord didn't care. He was too focused on his opponent. The Sky Dancer was facing off against the sole surviving child of the clan leaders. Camo and it was a brutal bout. Both of them were bleeding heavily and panting hard, but the fight wasn't about to end for a good bit. No, both were just getting started. They crashed together, and the crowd went wild. Fjord was faintly aware of the brood mother and the representatives for clans she hoped to ally with. Some group that would only respect strength, he assumed. Otherwise, they would have called the fight by now for appearance sake. But as it stood, he and Camo were having the best fight they've ever had in a good while. Fiora's crystal-like scales were glanced by Camo's bone-coated claws, causing shards to fly everywhere, casting glittering light to blind the other. Fior pressed the disadvantage, aiming for Camo's chest and belly as he tried to shield his eyes. The roar of pain and the wild cries above let Fior know he found his mark, but in retaliation, Camo had knocked Fior back with a powerful tail slam. He lay stunned in his side for a moment before barely rolling away from Camo's fellow follow-up blow. Tackling the mirror, the two rolled across the floor, raining blows down upon one another. It was vicious, and would have gone on had not met had he not managed to get on the top and pin his opponent to the floor. Fear barely registered the brood mother calling the fight before he was dragged to the healer's den. Laid in a nest, wounds bandaged, and broken bones set, he relaxed and grinned at Camo, who lay across from him. Well fought Camo. We put on quite a show. Hopefully that display will secure Mother's Alliance. Indeed. Fear chuckled inside his body ached, yet he was satisfied. Yawning, he laid his head in and his paws and yawned. He would uh, sleep well tonight. So wishing Camo good night, Fear let himself drift off to sleep. 
Ah, yes. A good little brawl. Nothing better to settle some differences, or maybe the favor of a king or queen, of course. Or what better, a broodmother. To beg their favor. Yes, yes. And it is a good little short story to definitely end this video on. Ah, yes. A nice little brawl. <laughs> They're also good for solving differences. I mean, what? <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't take advice from me, please. I beg you. Whatever you do, do not take advice from me. I That was a joke. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a crusader here, but that was a joke. <laughs> but aye, that was a good story. Thank you, Claire, for providing those stories for this week. We'll be expecting some more, maybe hopefully next week. I'm sorry for getting these late, but these past few weeks have been a bit brutal. Everything has been going a bit, uh... Well, let's just say not the way we want it to go. 2020 can't end any sooner than it's already begun. Just just let it end, please. <laughs> I'm, I'm already ready for 2021, even though it's probably not going to be as fun. But that's okay. Other than that, everybody, thank you for sticking around for this video. Please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And of course, I bid you all a very fond farewell. Be kind. And of course, good health.